The 21st century is experiencing significant moral and cultural challenges. The prevalence of wokeism and moral relativism, the idea that right and wrong do not exist, is encouraging conservative reactions in the public. Believe it or not, but the Scottish-American philosopher Alastair McIntyre knew that all of this would happen. McIntyre argued that the Age of Enlightenment caused a moral catastrophe in the West because it destroyed the building blocks of morality itself. McIntyre thought that Western civilization had built its morals off human nature and the Age of Enlightenment threw this all away. McIntyre argued that the Enlightenment thinkers set out to replace traditional forms of morality and instead using secular reasoning that did not respect man's nature or man's purpose. Instead, what the Enlightenment did was destroy Aristotle's notion of a virtuous life that had shaped Western thought for nearly 2,000 years. The Age of Reason rejected the idea of the telos, the idea that the universe and all things worked in a particular way, and it was in man's best interests to respect that purpose. For example, men and women were supposed to procreate, and human beings were supposed to strive towards the highest good. Moreover, Aristotle and other monotheistic religions taught that human beings, like all objects in the world, exist for a purpose, and acting morally was to fulfill each individual's purpose. In this video, we are going to understand the fantastic Alastair McIntyre, his philosophy, and why he is so critical for the cultural and moral transformation of the West. I hope you enjoy this video, and you're watching All Things Humanities. Alastair McIntyre, born in Glasgow in 1929, began his teaching career in 1951 at the University of Manchester. McIntyre began his philosophical life in the 1950s as a Marxist, and like many of his generation, he left the Communist Party after the Soviet invasion of Hungary in 1956. McIntyre was very critical of liberal morality, for it was arbitrary and not objective. After holding many academic roles, McIntyre published his famous work, After Virtue, where he famously criticised the Enlightenment philosophers for their approach to morality. As we have said at the beginning of this video, McIntyre thought that the approach of the Enlightenment thinkers was always doomed to begin with. He thought that all moral acts must be premised on our own human nature, and if we did not respect this, morality would not make sense, and it would lead us to all kinds of moral absurdities. In other words, using human nature and our purpose allowed our morality to become objective and not subjective. One of the examples McIntyre uses is the abortion issue in the United States. Pro-lifers, drawing largely on a particular interpretation of Christian ethics, say that abortion is murder and is morally unacceptable and deserving of legal punishment. However, people that are pro-choice usually draw on either a conception of women's rights and assert that women should have the right to make a private decision about terminating a pregnancy and therefore the abortion. In each situation, the conclusions flow logically, but the starting points are incompatible and there is no way to gain everyone's agreement on the reasons. McIntyre is pointing out that the Enlightenment philosophers have not been using human nature our purpose and human flourishing as the foundation of moral reasoning. Instead, it is using liberal philosophy, ideas like happiness, as its foundation. McIntyre thinks that this approach does not work for it is relative, and as a result, it promotes self-interest, which is the absolute opposite of morality and virtue. This, in the eyes of McIntyre, has led us to cultural beliefs like wokeism and transgenderism that we see now in 2022. On top of McIntyre's focus on human nature and purpose as the basis of morality, he also advocated for Aristotle's virtue ethics. In short, virtue ethics identifies morality as the habits of good character. Being a good person is not seeking to follow rules, but instead to be truthful, to be modest, and to be courageous in the face of fear. Many Enlightenment-inspired philosophers like Jeremy Bentham used happiness as this criteria, which, in the eyes of McIntyre, was totally incorrect. After all, continually striving for happiness was doomed to poison humanity, and McIntyre thought that respecting one's purpose and living virtuously would allow human beings to flourish instead. 
Let's take the example of raising a child. McIntyre would argue that acting selflessly and allocating funds to raise a child would be to live virtuously. However, under Enlightenment-inspired philosophers, if there were any situations where the child did not promote human happiness, this would be contrary to living a quote-unquote moral life. After all, modern philosophers like Jordan Peterson have spoken about the search for meaning as a manifestation of the truthful individual who fulfills his or her purpose. Additionally, Peterson sees many negative psychological ramifications from continuing to chase short-term desires that are in search of happiness. McIntyre thought that if human beings appeal to our purpose, we would be able to distinguish between the way we actually are and the way we should be. In the eyes of McIntyre, the post-Enlightenment philosophers failed because they could not find a moral anchor and therefore no grounding for their moral claims. This idea was expanded in McIntyre's Dependent Rational Animals, where he tried to ground virtues in an account of biology. This meant that a virtuous life was one where we would respect our own biology and therefore our needs. The failure to respect one's own nature leads to a state of what McIntyre calls Emotivism, meaning that moral claims are nothing more than just the expressions of personal desires. For example, one could argue that drinking alcohol on the lounge and neglecting his or her family is morally justifiable because it suits their own desires. Once again, this is because the post-Enlightenment thinkers forgot about human nature, virtue, and the purpose of each individual. Despite the moral and cultural chaos that the post-Enlightenment philosophers produced, McIntyre seems to think that there were still some positives to take from them. For example, liberal ideas stressed the importance of individual autonomy, which gave rise to feminism and the right of women to vote. However, McIntyre thinks that unrestrained freedom leads to almost a spiritual emptiness because individuals with no responsibility have no necessary social content and no necessary social identity. This means that if individuals do or say whatever they want, it becomes destructive and meaningless. As we've spoken about, it becomes impossible to justify what is good because we have lost the moral foundations of human nature. This also creates an epistemic problem when determining whether claims are true and what is believed to be true. If we do not have human nature and purpose as the grounding for what is right and what is wrong, then it becomes impossible to determine what is truly good and what is believed to be good. If not, moral principles become limitless, self-centered, and chaotic. This is how concepts of wokeism are born, because claims of injustice and unfairness are endless. The most damaging consequence of the Enlightenment for McIntyre is the decline of tradition, where an individual's desires are disciplined by virtue. The whole idea of upholding a tradition was for human beings to restrain themselves and appreciate the delicacy of traditional acts. An example would be holding up institutions like marriage or church attendance rather than appealing to human desire and short-termism. McIntyre thought of morality as a type of game. Moral behavior is like any other practical activity like playing chess or herding sheep. It was a matter of conforming to the standards of that practice. For example, a player cannot decide for himself what is to play chess well. To be a good chess player, you have to align with the structure of the game, and McIntyre is saying morality should be treated in the same way. Being a moral person was to abide by the structures of the universe and not to arbitrarily decide what was moral behavior and what was right and wrong. In the early 1980s, McIntyre converted to Catholicism after being convinced by the works of Thomas Aquinas. This is because Aquinas premised his concept of morality off human nature, and Catholicism still upheld this doctrine. There are some criticisms to be said about McIntyre. McIntyre may be taking a stance against the subjectivity of moral claims that he hates so much, but he never really deals with the problem about how more modern moral ideas would have even evolved at all if they weren't part of our human nature. After all, the Aztecs were happy to rip the hearts out of their own slaves and sacrifice them to the gods, and while doing so, were in a state of happiness and joy. In the 21st century, McIntyre is more important than ever, especially in a society where wokeism and moral relativism is more prevalent than ever. If there's anything to take from McIntyre, it's that morality and the good is objective, 
for it must align with our own human nature and our own purpose. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, consider subscribing and liking the video. Tell me what you think about McIntyre. Do you agree with him? Let me know in the comments section below.